Jibafofi is a giant spider cryptid said to inhabit the Congolese forest. Descriptions vary between a funnel web spider and a gigantic tarantula. We thought the latter would be more pragmatic, but the funnel webs made it to the final artwork. As I said, the tarantula type was decided early on, being that a myriad of tarantulas roam the Congolese forests. Now for the crazier part. Some accounts put these spiders at a meter and a half leg span. That's a tarantula capable of taking down medium to large mammals like leopards, juvenile okapi and humans. Now, the medium-sized tarantula reaches like 15 cm leg span and it's capable of hunting down like small mice, small lizards, the occasional birds. But this script it takes it to the next level, making it one of the most interesting in our series. The best known alleged Jibafofi sighting occurred in 1938 in the interior of the Belgian Congo and was made by explorers Reginald and Marguerite Lloyd, a couple that was driving down the roads of the Belgian Congo at the time, now it's the Democratic Republic of the Congo, so at the time it was pretty different, and this couple made one of the best known accounts of this cryptid, which is as following. Whilst they were driving down a jungle path, a figure crawled out onto the road ahead of their car, which Reginald Lloyd took to be a cat or a monkey, like a big cat or a big monkey, or even a small child. They really didn't understand at first what it was that crawled onto the road. He stopped the car to let the figure pass, and seeing that it was in fact an enormous spider, like a tarantula, big hairy spider, turned to get his camera, only for the spider to scuttle away into the undergrowth. The encounter was later passed on to Bill Gibbons by the Lloyd's daughter, Margaret. Now, this has to be one of the best descriptions of this cryptid, and I think it's a description that made me fall in love with this cryptid. It's so cinematic, it's so, I think, visceral. We can almost be there in the footsteps of these explorers and see the spider ourselves if we close our eyes. It's, it's really amazing, and it's one of the things that made me draw this series in the first place. These cryptids are said to be extremely venomous, but I don't think that makes a lot of sense. We, as authors, don't think the Jbafofi being extremely venomous makes a lot of sense, because it's a almost 2 meter leg span spider, it doesn't really need to be extremely venomous to deliver a fatal bite, so we didn't really took that into account when conceptualizing or finalizing the cryptid itself. Now we had this giant defensive tarantula conceptualized. I say defensive because they're said to be extremely aggressive, but I find aggressive to be a mistake. I do not call them that, they're just animals, so it's best to say they're defensive. And we actually started off with a nest of babies on the first volume, even though these babies are born the size of the biggest tarantula alive today, the Tyrafosa blondi. It's a South American gigantic tarantula. It reaches the size of a dinner plate. It has the common name bird hitter. So you can picture this spider like crawling to the bird's nest and hitting the birds. I think that's how it was discovered. It's actually another crazy story because it was discovered by a scientist, a female scientist, if I'm not mistaken. And she said she saw a spider, a gigantic spider, hitting a bird. And she was ridicularized by the scientific committee. And they actually found some years later that account to be true. And uh, the Tyrafosa blondi is the biggest terrestrial arachnid, I think, known today to, to be alive. There were bigger arachnids in the Carboniferous era, but that's a subject for another video. Back to it. So, throughout our series, various adults also make troublesome appearances. So they come in contact with some of our characters, some of our protagonists, human protagonists. But we wanted to really emphasize that no tarantula attacks unprovoked. We have to bear in mind these are animals, they're not out there to kill you, they're not out there to come crawling in your bed. Those are just myths, no one swallows 10 spiders per night. That's a National Geographic myth and it's, uh, and it's actually a really fun one because I think those few words have created more arachnophobes than we can count. So, although this is a very scary looking cryptid, a very defensive cryptid, it's still an animal and it isn't out there to follow our characters to, to their death. Whenever some encounter happens, is the human's fault. So, every time there's an attack, the humans messed with it first, which is blatantly realistic. As an owner of several species of tarantula, this was probably my favorite cryptid to conceptualize. If you want to know this cryptid and a bunch more, you can head over to the links in the description. We have digital comics on Amazon, Google Play, and a very special announcement. Our official store is now launched, and we have some comics and merch for you to check out. If you want to support us, we appreciate you.
Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.